Um, so I um, am a recent hire here at the National Weather Service in San Diego. Um, I was just hired uh, back in June. Um, as um, the ladies mentioned before, um, I was the last round to be hired um, where you could apply to kind of anywhere and everywhere. So um, this will kind of be my um, experience kind of going through that and um, how to interview uh, for the Weather Service. Um, it's been great here working at San Diego. Uh, we have a great view from our office, uh, the mountains and the valley there, um, but also a very diverse county warning area with the, the beaches there in the desert, Palm Springs and the mountains. So um, it's been a good experience so far. So I'm going to share a little input with you here. All right, so uh, just on the agenda here, a little intro um, about myself. Um, I'll talk about some courses and interests that um, I've done and that you can do um, for getting a job in the Weather Service. I'll move on to a little bit about resume tips and interview tips, um, you know, to make yourself more marketable. And then I'll kind of talk about uh, what I do here at NWS San Diego and about the job of itself. Uh, so just a little bit about me. Um, I went to Ohio University there in Athens, Ohio. Um, I graduated in 2017, so I am uh, quite young, pretty much a student as well. So um, I can really relate to you um, you all as students. Um, I got my geography and meteorology uh, degree as well as my French degree. Um, if you have a passion, go for it. I love foreign languages. So um, getting a French degree was awesome. Study abroad if you can. Um, I also did, um, as I kind of discussed before, um, I, I'm still a part of the Master's in Emergency Management program there at Millersville. Uh, it's an online program, which is really, um, really good. Uh, you can kind of do it, you know, anywhere you want at your own pace. Um, I did it for about a year, and then I have about four classes left to go. Um, so kind of just going to scope that out here in the next year or two. And then um, a couple internships and different things that I've done in meteorology. I was a forecaster for the North Dakota Cloud Modification Project up there in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, really good experience forecasting for the cloud seeders and uh, aviation. Um, I've been a volunteer at the National Weather Service in Charleston, West Virginia, which is Ohio University's uh, local forecast office. And then also um, at the National Weather Service in Bismarck as well. And then uh, just last year, I was a graduate assistant for the Millersville uh, Emergency Management Program. Um, as I said, the program is online, but they also have a Center for Disaster Research and Education there on campus in Pennsylvania, uh, where I was um, helping out with that for uh, last year. So really good experience there. So uh, kind of different courses uh, you should be thinking about taking. Um, sometimes, you know, we're in our meteorology degree and it's, you know, it's a lot to take in, but um, you know, kind of something, little little extra things that you can be thinking about taking. So um, I know a GIS class is required, but, um, you know, once you take these classes, are you thinking about, oh, this really interests me. Maybe I should take another GIS class and then maybe kind of uh, develop something out of that. Programming, if you're really good at uh, Python, C++, any of that, um, if you're really good at that and you, you like doing it, take another class, uh, see where it goes. Um, the National Weather Service is definitely looking for that GIS programming um, type of experience. Um, also, communication, public speaking, you can never go wrong with that. Um, there's definitely, um, you know, many different uh, avenues you can take with that. Um, I regret kind of not taking a public speaking class in college. I wish I would have uh, done that, but, you know, it's never too late. You can um, always do it in your professional career as well, uh, but that'll definitely benefit you. Um, as you uh, try and get a job into the weather service. And then uh, kind of what was mentioned before, I think a couple of these talks, uh, social science, emergency management, those are very important that the National Weather Service uh, has been really looking into. So any psychology or sociology uh, type of classes that you can take with those, um, I think that would be very beneficial. I know um, Millersville has a bachelor's in emergency management. So um, any type of classes, you know, you can do a major or minor in um, would be, a uh, very good uh, thing to do. Uh, so focusing on an interest, uh, the, a niche, if you will, kind of um, this is really good to, you know, show supervisors what your big focus is on, what you want to research more, what you want to look into. Um, my big question here, you know, what interests you in meteorology that you want to further explore? 
And the key of, of that is what you want to, not as what you think you have to. So that is definitely something, you know, you want something that you are passionate about, excited about. And so, you know, this can start in your undergrad career and then transition into um, a master's degree in grad school. Uh, that's definitely something that's good. Um, find something you have a passion for. Definitely want to research something that you want to get into. Um, as we've said before, some of those, you know, senior capstone projects, research projects are always a good place to start speaking with your professors about, you know, what kind of options there are, what you can do, and, you know, come, come up with your own ideas, come up with things that you want to do, and your professors, I think, can really help you out and uh, make a project out of it. And this shows employers, you know, research skills. Um, if you're working even with a person, you know, project work experience, working with others is always something that is very important to show um, on a resume and uh, while you're interviewing. And really, how can this passion help improve the field of meteorology? So uh, when you're trying to, you know, think of an interest or think of something you want to do, try and focus that passion, that study, um, and how it can improve the field and how it can, um, you know, make things uh, for the weather service kind of improve um, that as well. So uh, kind of my story, how, you know, I kind of went through college. Um, you know, my passion, helping people in need during natural disasters. It's not very specific or anything, but, um, you know, it's good to uh, have this sort of, um, you know, type of uh, passion in your mind that you want to uh, get something done and, you know, gear it toward uh, the weather as well. So I joined different organizations in college. Um, AFIO, Alpha Phi Omega was a co-ed service fraternity. I did a lot of service projects um, in the Athens community. Um, so that was really where my you know, service background uh, was uh, grew and blossomed throughout college uh, was through that organization, and then through you know meteorology of course um, through your local AMS chapter. Very important to be uh, part of that, whether it's at your university or whether it's in um, kind of a local regional chapter across the state, wherever you may be. Um, it's definitely important to join that. Um, I also joined the AMS Committee on Emergency Management. So, um, yeah, if you have any other um, interests or anything, um, there's the AMS community page on the AMS website that's good. Maybe post um, some of your interests and there's probably a committee for you to join um, that you can be a part of and meet new people in this um, growing field of meteorology, emergency management and all of that. Um, and so, I, you know, my passion was more with people side of things and um, emergency management and all of that. So. I really wanted to go to grad school in emergency management. And, um, you know, there, there aren't uh, many of them out there, especially ones where you can uh, actually go to the school. Um, a lot of them are actually online. So, um, you know, whether you want to travel to a school or whether you want to, you know, maybe stay at home, work, and then do your degree as well, um, there are different options for emergency management with that. Um, but when I was in my master's program there in Millersville, I worked a little bit with the National Weather Service. So, you know, if you want to get into the weather service, uh, it's always good to be working with your local office, um, all of that. And so I was worked with the state college office a little bit on uh, storm readiness. So something, you know, you can get working with the National Weather Service office is always a good thing. Um, if you're interested in NWS or in FEMA, um, I can just tell you from my past experience, you know, Having the EM masters um, will definitely help you stand out for an interview. Uh, so kind of, you know, with the student life here, um, being being a student can be hard, especially in meteorology. Um, if you have any other majors as well, um, it can definitely feel like a lot. Uh, graduating was, you know, it was very fun, but also, you know, sad time leaving the university. But you can officially say you're a meteorologist after you graduate. So it's really, it's really, it's worth it. Um, don't give up, whether it's in your class, classes or um, applying for, you know, any type of internships or jobs. Um, as I state here, applying for a job is a job in and of itself. I think my parents probably told me that, but um, it, they're definitely correct. I can attest to this. Um, you know, younger students, uh, freshmen, sophomores, um, feel free to ask, you know, juniors and seniors who, um, have applied for these internships, who have had them. Ask them about their experience. Ask them, you know, how did you get it? How did you do it? You know, 
sometimes it's kind of uh, hard to balance, but um, you know, asking your peers is always um, a good way to go about that. Little rhyme time for you, you know, after having said all this, you know, it'll be okay, but maintain your GPA. Um, you know, you don't want to uh, kind of fall off the wagon there, especially if you're a junior or a senior and, you know, your meteorology classes start to dwindle or anything like that. So definitely uh, don't let it affect your grades, but um, keep pushing through and uh, something will come. Um, if you are in a grad program right now, any grad students who are watching, um, you know, see if you're allowed to finish up early, if you're allowed to uh, maybe uh, do some of the other classes remotely. Um, I know a couple of people have been hired who have, you know, they're midway through their graduate degrees and they're getting into the weather service and they're able to finish the degrees and, you know, finish their theses, um, you know, in other places. So um, definitely see what the terms are for the grad program. Um, as for me in Millersville, I was able to stay for a year and then was able to uh, leave and, and kind of finish the program. So uh, see what kind of the contract is for that and if you're allowed to uh, pursue a position while you're still in grad school. So a couple of resume tips. I know uh, some uh, people have already um, kind of given some advice on this. Um, as someone who just went through this, this is kind of what I had to deal with. Um, so obviously it's through USA Jobs. Um, I put in, I'm pretty sure you have to have a full-time, um, you have to have a actual degree when applying for the full-time position. Um, I've tried as a senior, um, usually don't get referred. So um, usually you have to apply uh, when you have a degree, but it's always good to apply anyway. And then as we've spoken about before a few times, um, those questions are very important to incorporate into your resume. Into your resume. Um, the workforce management personnel are not meteorologists, so just make sure that you are um, matching those questions and answers uh, correctly. Um, kind of avoid um, any jargon if you can. Um, all types of experience, big or small, lots of you know different experiences that you've had in meteorology that can um, really um, tell them who you are, tell them what you've done. And so um, kind of a good tip is have two types of resumes, you know, the one five or six pager for USA Jobs, and then also to the, um, to the hiring official. So once, you, once you're once you referred, um, you can send a kind of a condensed resume to them, tell them who you are. I was referred to over 30 offices, so I sent 30 separate emails. It took a long time, but I will wanted to make sure that um, I was going to get hired somewhere. And so I wanted to um, each of those people to know who I was. And so um, it can take a lot of time, but it's definitely worth it in the end if you do it the right way. So receiving the interview, um, things that you should be doing right now in college. Uh, so there are some different things I want to touch upon. Involvement in your local AMS chapter, very important. I'm going to talk about a little bit about internships. Networking, very important, as we've heard. Um, big thing, act as if you all are already working for your desired organization. So if you want to be in the National Weather Service, it is time to act like you are in the National Weather Service. What would you be doing? What, uh, what things you know, should you be doing um, in the community, in research? Some questions to uh, keep in mind there. Um, as we've heard, hiring officials may receive over 100 applications. I think um, I applied to the Louisville office. Um, I made it, I think, to the second round. And he said there were about 185 applications. And they were only hiring two people. So it can be a little intimidating, but um, the time to make yourself stand out is now. So definitely make sure you know, you're know you doing those things to make yourself stand out um, from the crowd. So AMS chapter involvement, um, very important. if. You know, especially younger students, if you're not involved in your local chapter yet, um, definitely get involved. It's very important. It's very beneficial. Um, I had a wonderful time at Ohio University being involved in the chapter throughout my five years of being there. So um, it can definitely, you know, boost your resume and um, it can really help you um, obtain a job. Um, chapter officer, 
uh, being good if you know if you're a junior or senior and you know maybe thinking about it I think it's definitely a good thing I was an officer for a year it was a great experience to be kind of you know a leader in that respect um, even if you're younger um, the ones who apply the ones who um, you know put themselves out there and um, you know apply themselves and run for different officer positions while they're young well most of those people have gotten officer positions um, later in their years in college and go far so it's never too early to run for a position um, always looking for leadership efforts in your chapter ways to improve your chapter um, that would definitely be something that you would uh, like to say in an interview uh, different ways you've improved the chapter um, I would uh, uh, made a co-op observation site for um, Ohio University in collaboration with NWS Charleston and kind of taught my you know uh, folks at my chapter how to you know record observations and different things like that so that's kind of an example of you know something to improve and a, a big thing is um, collaborating with potential employers partners in your area um, research kind of uh, who the National Weather Service what kind of uh, partners they work with fire, police, um, really a wide array of um, community members. And so a good idea is, you know, collaborating with different partners um, in your local area and seeing how you can help them if they you know, would like to um, work with uh, students in meteorology. And also promoting ideas, kind of going along the same lines, promoting ideas that align with professional jobs. Um, this picture on the right, I think I saw it on Instagram. Um, I don't think we've ever done this before. I think it's um, their first time doing it, but I was very proud because I thought, wow, this is very, very National Weather Service. This is definitely something I would be doing here in my job um, at San Diego. And so here they are um, at a safety day outreach event, um, teaching folks about weather. So anything that your chapter that you can come up with and do in the local community, um, is a really big benefit and something I think um, employers would really uh, like to see. Internships, so uh, we talked a little bit about uh, today about um, the internships that are, you know, that'll really get you into the weather service. Um, as I said, from my experience, I've done two volunteer shifts. Um, they're, they're awesome. It's, um, you know, don't limit yourself to only where you live. It's really good to, um, especially those smaller offices who aren't, you know, having all these meteorology students, you know, knocking on their door asking for a volunteership. Um, if you can really, um, if you have a family member or a friend, maybe who lives at a near a local office, maybe a smaller office, uh, maybe live with them for the summer. Um, it's not paid, but maybe you could get a job somewhere else and then work at the weather service a little bit. But uh, doing that is a probably the best way in my opinion to get your foot in the door um, and all and always um, ask about you know receiving these um, not just really you're not really going to get a position if you know don't ask about it so uh, when I got the national or when I got um, my internship up in Bismarck with the cloud modification project I noticed there was a uh, forecast office up there so I emailed um, people and asked about you know this position if it was if they'd be willing to take me on and they looked through my uh, schooling and transcript and it was a yes so it's uh, you know it can be sometimes it can be easier than you think um, but also if you have an NWS FEMA pathways applying for the Holling scholarship um, that is also very important um, those are definite ways to really get into the weather service if you can get one of those uh, you have a very good chance of uh, making a job in an office. Um, very uh, good things. I've uh, had experience with uh, local emergency management offices as well. So while I was a grad student at Millersville, um, I uh, also volunteered at the local emergency management office there in Lancaster County. Great experience to kind of, you know, a lot of us are so sciencey and meteorologists and all of that. But it's really good to kind of expose ourselves to um, another entity that um, you know we closely work with. So uh, that's definitely something that you should uh, get into. Um, contact your local office. Uh, the one in Lancaster County kind of had like an intern academy, but um, 
don't be afraid to contact your local county office and see what you can do for them. Maybe they have a project for you. And then also uh, private sector internships. Um, yeah, just because these aren't you know federal government or anything like that um, doesn't mean that they don't have clout. So um, it's you know if you can do something like AccuWeather or Weatherbug, I know uh, intern we just hired here a couple months ago. She did an internship at Weatherbug. Um, it's very good to have you know people working for the National Weather Service who have experience um, in the private sector since we are working with them closer and closer than ever. A little thing about networking here, it's uh, very important. Um, as I kind of mentioned before, I'm more of a people person, more of an outreach oriented, uh, educating people on the weather, uh, talking at webinars like I'm doing right now. Um, so, you know, networking is definitely a big part of um, this job. And, you know, if you're kind of, you know, kind of just do your own thing and kind of just stay at your school or maybe something like that, um, you know, it's definitely think about attending these conferences and uh, making yourself, putting yourself out there, really. Um, professors, great help. They can always um, guide you kind of, you know, where you need to go. Ask, you know, they ask good questions, kind of, you know, what do you want to do? What are you looking for in the future? And then they can definitely help you out with that. Um, conferences are very important. Um, picture in the middle there, those are two meteorologists in charge. And the guy on the left, I met him at a conference a couple years ago, and now he's my boss. So that just tells you that you never know who you're going to meet at these conferences. You never know who you're going to talk to. And so it's always good to um, network with that. And so um, always just put yourself out there at conferences and uh, feel free to shake someone's hand and introduce yourself. Um, again, I say, uh, you know, networking with um, government, private sector uh, organizations in your local area is always very important. Working with your local National Weather Service office, um, definitely if you want to get into the Weather Service, that is something I highly recommend, um, especially, um, you know, it'll really, you know, kind of get you to meeting people and uh, making sure that, you know, you are making yourself known. Um, like the picture um, up at the right there, visiting the National Weather Service in Charleston with our um, college crew there. And then get involved. Um, you know, how can you help them? That's a big thing that they want to know. And so, um, you know, making sure that you're always willing to help and willing to get involved is important. So the interview, as I said before, this is kind of um, right before they kind of cut it off or you could only apply to five positions. So I had 16 interviews. You know, 14 of them were by phone, two were by Google Hangouts. So, um, you know, don't be afraid if they want to do a Google Hangout. They're actually, in my opinion, kind of uh, better. You get to see who the people are that you're working with, and you get to, uh, you know, really kind of have a better conversation. And so there could be anyone on the call, the meteorologist in charge, warning coordination meteorologist, science and operations officer, forecasters, anyone. So expect that. Um, there could be as little as, little as five questions, maybe a upwards of 16 questions. Um, so you never know kind of how short or how long the interview is gonna go. Um, a written interview is possible. As I said, I did the Louisville interview. Um, some of it was written. And they may ask science-related questions to meteorology. So be prepared, um, whether that's on the phone or whether that's in, you know, written, uh, you may get a question or two, of, uh, uh, kind of a really sciencey question about, you know, meteorology. So definitely be prepared for that. But stay calm, cool, and collected. You know, this is your time to share with who you are, talk about your passion, and of course, why you want to be a professional meteorologist in the National Weather Service. So just a couple uh, interview tips here, kind of incorporating your background and experience um, kind of to these three uh, uh, NWS fields here, kind of the organization as a whole and the forecast office you're applying to those decision support services, so outreach and um, you know, forecaster uh, input on uh, decisions, all of that, and then scientific research and different technology skills. So kind of the uh, forecast office as a whole, what you can expect, um, they might ask you about the NWS mission, what, uh, what do you think about it, building a weather-ready nation, what does that mean to you? Um, also in an interview, they may ask, about specific weather impacts to their office. So 
um, if you're applying to a place like Bismarck, North Dakota here, uh, make sure you know kind of what weather they deal with versus if you're applying somewhere like here in San Diego, California. So that is something they'll um, definitely want to know about. Why the National Weather Service? Why are you applying to this office? Um, make sure you know you have a good answer for that. And then, um, as was stated before, kind of definitely uh, there will be scenario-based questions in your interviews, whether it's um, answering someone's call on the phone, whether it's dealing with another forecaster in the office. So make sure you're kind of um, ready for those types of questions. Decision support services, um, you know, it's good to uh, incorporate kind of projects that you've done, um, that you've done with the weather service offices, with your school, with your local AMS chapter. Um, you know, have you done storm ready? Um, as I said before, um, I created a co-op site with the National Weather Service in my school, different things like that. Um, if there are any integrated warning teams uh, that your National Weather Service puts on, um, you know, feel free to reach out to them and see if they would like an academia presence. I think that would be uh, something very important. If your local NWS office hasn't really put on an integrated warning team in a while, maybe you all could put it on your chapter so and invite them. So uh, something, you know, good ideas that stem from the integrated warning team, I think is um, definitely something that is important. In different campus events, you can talk about, you know, fundraisers or different things that you've done. Um, on campus to promote uh, the weather uh, meteorological knowledge uh, throughout your community. Um, also talking about social media, what experiences you have with that, and then um, different communications, presenting, tabling here as I did at AMS in Austin. So, um, you know, kind of incorporating those things um, to the DSS level is uh, very important in the weather service. Looking at uh, the more scientific research side, technology side, um, if you've been in, into, you know, GIS or coding, um, you know, those are very important. Have you presented these uh, at conferences, the Senior Capstone Project? Um, those are definitely, you know, some good things to use when talking about research experience and, um, you know, conference experience. Um, if anything is, if you've had anything published, um, that's really good to kind of incorporate uh, your research knowledge and things that you could bring to the office as a whole. And then just some miscellaneous questions. So, you know, I had 16 interviews. So these are some of the questions that really uh, stood out that I was asked a lot. You know, what is your greatest accomplishment? Um, you know, it can be in meteorology or it can be in, um, you know, life in general. When have you implemented change or innovation? That is probably one of the biggest ones that was asked. Um, so I'll let you think about that, kind of how you've, uh, change, you know, your AMS chapter or um, change, you know, something in the research community that's uh, very good to look at. Working with others, of course, customer service, the National Weather Service has service in its name. So, you know, questions about customer service is very important. Leadership skills, very important. Uh, you may ask uh, about shift work, you know, are you willing to do it? Um, have you done it before? Maybe talk about your experiences with it. And a big one is, will you actually move here? It's different when clicking on a box and USA Jobs and say, okay, sure, versus when they ask you and it's a little like, oh, you know, you kind of might have to rethink. So make sure uh, you apply to places uh, where you want to go. Lots of opportunities when you get into the weather service. Um, you know, the world is your oyster. You can kind of take it where you, you know, want to go with it. I've had a lot of um, cool uh, opportunities here. Got to meet a Bobcat alumni at the FAA Center there uh, north of Los Angeles. Really cool, uh, cool outreach events that we do and that you can do if you're um, in, get in the weather service. It's a great opportunity. Even, I know we're not broadcast meteorologists, but you never know may walk in one day and they may say, oh, you want to do a TV interview? They're coming in in an hour. So good thing I was dressed up for the occasion. So I, I was able to be on TV, a great experience. So um, never know where it can take you, the opportunities in the weather service. Uh, right, the job is uh, I gotta really give, great. I got to give you like a two minute wrap up, okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, last slide. Okay. Um, so yeah, the job has, um, Turn your passion and interest to a reality. 
Um, good place to explore, um, a new place, get involved in your local community. My job is involved, you know, lots of training involved, but, um, you know, it's definitely um, something that's worthwhile. Oh, I think we lost your mic. <laughs> Are you back? Hello? Okay, yeah, if there anyone you um, has any questions or anything, uh, um, there's my email, willing to help. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions or comments, um, I'd be glad to answer them for you. Email me anytime. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, that's a great perspective because uh, like you said, you just went through it. This process is continually changing. Um, what I went through when I first came in is totally different from what people are going through now. And that may change again in, in six to 12 months. So um, always, always try to seek people who have just gone through the experience, whether it's somebody you know uh, from school or, um, or maybe uh, contacting your local NWS office to ask, um, you know, about the process. And, and um, most places, they are very happy to, to talk to you. Mm -hmm.